Hello everyone, I'm going to take you step by step in how to get started with the new character controller I released on the Asset Store, which is a top-down click-to-move controller. It is something the community has been asking a lot, so I decided to finally do it. And by the way, it is a great time to grab it as I'm releasing this video because it's currently 30% off for a limited time. Anyway, so um, the first thing you need to make sure is to go under the RPG Builder Editor and go to settings and editor. And here you need to make sure that you have 1.1.0.5 installed. Otherwise the integration is not going to work. Now, uh, another thing I wanted to remind you is that this controller is of course fully integrated with RPG Builder as we will see in this video, but it is not required to use with RPG Builder. It is also a standalone controller that you can use in any of your other projects. Now, the next thing of course will be to import the um, controller package right so once you purchase it you can just import it from the asset store or the package manager and that's what i'm going to do right now in my case i'm just going to drag and drop the package directly from my computer but it's going to be the exact same for you and here as you can see it is under the blick folder of course and we now have a controller folder and a top down click uh, controller so um, here we have all the files you don't really have to bother with that you literally just click import everything and I uh, wait for it to be done. I'm not going to pause the recording because it should be relatively quick. It's mostly just a uh, code. So that's done. And here we have the controller folder and the top down click controller folder. Now, already we can go in the demo, for example, and I can give you um, a look at what the controller is and how it works and how it performs, etc. Let me go in full screen. So we can zoom the camera in and out, we can rotate the camera, we can hold to move, I can of course click. Uh, it can also, you know, have some nice uh, path detection. So for example, if I'm clicking in this um, spot in the terrain, it's of course not going to let us go in there. But as we can see, it's going to show um, the path as orange. So it's kind of like a fixed path uh, or rather like rectified path, which is, you know, um, the, uh, the code, the controller is finding a, a good path for you. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, we can hold a um, key to um, stand still and rotate the character. So this can be useful for combat and it comes with a lot of things. But of course, where this controller really shines is when we actually do the RPG Builder integration, which is uh, what we will do now. So I'm simply going to go back to the main menu and what I'm going to do is go in the integration folder. And here you see that we have a Unity package called RPGB top down click to move. I'm simply going to uh, double click that. And as you can see, it's going to import a new folder and it's going to override the code of the controller because now it's going to basically replace it with the RPG Builder version um, of this controller, right? So you just click import, it should be uh, very quick also. And after that, you see that we now have this folder, which comes with an animator, um, a few things to make sure you get started quickly. And of course, the um, character, uh, the RPG Builder character prefab. So this is very cool because you don't even have to do anything. You don't have to create any kind of prefab. You literally just drag and drop it in the editor, which is what I'm going to show you in a bit. But first, I want to show you how um, flexible I made this character for uh, this character controller for you. So here we have the uh, controller component which is top down click to move controller. And this is where you will have full freedom about all the settings that you can tweak for this controller. And um, there are quite a lot. So you have settings for the camera, for the navigation, uh, input settings, so for the keys, etc. Um, the keys, by the way, I'm going to show you at the end of the video. Um, you can either use some static ones, so you can predefine them here, or of course you can use the action key system from um, RPG Builder, right? Uh, but I'm going to cover this a bit later. Anyway, so as you can see, quite a lot of settings. I'm not going to go in detail about them just now. I'm probably going to do like an in-depth video on those, but I just wanted to show you that you have a lot of freedom on how this controller plays. So now the next thing we have to do to actually use it in RPG Builder is going to uh, General, Races, and in this case, I'm going to change the Human Race, but of course, this will be the same process with your own races. And all I have to do here is literally just replace the previous character prefab with the one I'm providing you in the package. Then I'm going to drag and drop those uh, animator overrides under combat and rest, save. Now I'm also going to go under settings, items, weapons, 
So you open weapons, my bad, you open weapons here, and weapon animator override. And here I'm also going to um, replace those. This is not needed, but it's just that uh, if we don't do this, when we equip a um, weapon, it's not going to be the right animator for this controller anymore. So I'm just going to drag and drop um, combat. And as you can see right now, I'm drag and dropping the um, the human one without any weapon, which is of course not ideal, uh, but you will create your own ones later. So that's not a problem. So I'm just going to go um, ahead and save. Now, the next thing to do is go in the demo scene or of course your own scene. Um, so whatever scene you want to use. And uh, you will just select those two things and you can either remove them or delete them. And the reason for that is because camera rig and player input I, are only used with the built-in character controller, which is the action RPG one. So that's not needed anymore for the uh, top-down one. But what we do need is a camera, right? We still need the camera. So I'm just going to select this one, Control D to duplicate it, and drag and drop it outside. And I'm going to um, name it main camera. And now we finally, you know, have a camera again that's going to be possible to use in your game. Now you can name this camera anything you want, but um, if you do name it something different than main camera, you need to go in the character prefab here. And you see under the camera field, we have a camera name. So make sure to copy this name and paste it here and save your prefab. Um, that way, the uh, controller, when you spawn in RPG Builder, is going to find a reference to this camera. And that's it. That's literally all we had to do to use this new controller in RPG Builder. So I'm now going to go in game. You can either make a new character or use one of your existing ones. It's going to uh, work just fine. And that's it. We are in RPG Builder and we are uh, using the click to move um, controller. So right now I am in the demo. As you can see, it's still the uh, demo animation, which are really not looking good. But of course, you will use your own animation. But as you can see, we have all the features from um, the controller. We can rotate, we can move. And of course, we have all the extra features from RPG Builder also. So now I can sprint. Uh, you can use the ground leap ability. You can be knocked back by um, mobs and everything that RPG Builder has. Uh, you also have it. So for example, here, uh, of course, once again, the animation is really not ideal for this. This is supposed to be some kind of like dodge roll. But as you can see, um, I can use it and it's working just fine. Also, as you notice, uh, if I'm right clicking on this quest giver, it is coming with a new interaction system specially made for this controller, which is letting us interact with things um, at a distance. So for example, here we have an interactive node, uh, which is, you know, a flower. I can click on it and it will uh, gather it. And of course, once again, it didn't play a nice animation, but you can just drag and drop a nice gathering animation that you have from a pack and it's going to look a lot better. But as you can see, um, it's fully integrated, it's very cool, very fun to use, and uh, every single combat mechanic is possible to use. It's ready, as you can see, for example, the projectile is fully handled, it works the way it will work in a top-down game. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the, uh, the world like integration part. And now I want to show you how you can use um, the action keys from RPG Builder. So for example, if we go under settings, uh, actually it was under general and action keys. Here we have action keys list. You can go all the way to the bottom. And here you could, if you wanted, um, set, set up some new keys for you to use with the controller instead, because uh, in your game, you might want to let your player uh, set those keys, right? Because as you can see by default, we have the move key, the stand key, the rotate camera uh, keys, and those keys are static. Whatever you set those, uh, the player is not going to be able to change it. But if you turn this on, use action key, here you can see that we now have some um, action key names. You can, of course, put whatever name you have here, but they need to match uh, what you um, put here. So here, for example, I'm going to uh, set the top down move key. Um, I'm going to go very simple. I don't want this video to take too long. Um, the default key is going to be mouse one. Um, then we are going to do the um, top down stand key. So I'm just going to call this stand. And by default, I'm going to make it space. Then we have the um, top down rotate key. So I'm just going to call this rotate left. And this is going to be um, arrow key. I don't know where they are exactly. I uh, don't know, actually, I think it's starting with L. So yeah, left arrow. 
and um, rotate right. I'm going to copy this, and the default key is going to be um, right arrow. That's it. And now I can literally just go ahead, save, go back in game. And uh, now I can still move like before because we set the same default keys. But if I would press escape, go to settings, and now see the movement, we see move, stand, rotate left, rotate right. So this was automatically added to the UI for you. And if I would, for example, set this to uh, J, now if I move or if I hold my mouse, my right click is not going to work anymore. But if I press uh, J, it's going to work. So And now I can also hold it just like um, I would normally. So that's great. Now you're players can really fully customize those keys. Now, another thing um, that I wanted to show you in this video is uh, the NavMesh Cleaner tool. So um, to do that, I'm going to simply create a new scene really quickly. And I'm going to uh, create a cube as a ground. Let's make it very small. I don't want the NavMesh baking to take too long. Um, I'm going to save the scene, just generate lightning. Uh, we can save it here. It's fine. It doesn't need to be anything important. Okay. Just so that it doesn't have odd lightning. And now I'm going to create another cube uh, here. And pull it uh, something like that. Okay. Now uh, I want to show you something um, with NavMesh. So if I go ahead now and bake the NavMesh. If it lets me do it. Let me check. Uh, I, I think I need to add those as static. That's why I forgot. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and bake the nav mesh. And as you can see, uh, the nav mesh is nice. But if we go inside here, inside the cube, there is also nav mesh, which is really not supposed to happen, right? Because none of our NPCs or player should have, uh, should ever be able to go in there. And this is not only bad for performance, but it's also um, making it uh, sometimes create some issues with your nav mesh agent, which are your characters and NPCs, because they will sometimes try to go in that. So what I'm going to do here is add a new uh, game object in the scene and type nav. And here you see that the controller is coming with a component called NavMesh Cleaner. By the way, this tool is not from me. Um, it is from another developer. I'm going to credit in the description. It was really, really nice to uh, let me include this tool directly in the controller. So thanks to him. And honestly, it's a very, very clever tool. So now let me uh, explain to you how this works. So uh, all you have to do, like I said, is create a new empty game object in your scene, add this component, and then you select this component and uh, hold control and click. And here you see that it's basically just going to tell to this tool, hey, this is a normal area that we're supposed to be able to work on, okay? So now you can consider this a normal area. And what this is going to do now is, um, I'm going to reset the mesh just to show you again. Here, you, you I don't really tweak those settings ever. Uh, it works pretty good for me with default, but I click on uh, calculate. And here you see what it did. It added some uh, mesh on top of this, and it also added one inside. Uh, it's hard to see because it's two white cube, but here you can see we now have a mesh. So if I had the mesh, it's gone. And um, if I show it again, we, we can see it again. And now we can literally just go to navigation and beg the nav mesh again. And um, I'm going to reset the mesh, fix the navigation. And if we go here, you see that the nav mesh is gone inside. So that's kind of magic. It's very, very cool. And um, yeah, this is just a lot cleaner. It's better on performance and it is avoiding a lot of issues. For example, your NPCs could get stuck in this uh, cube, right? So that's, of course, not something you want. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for this developer. Very, very cool. I'm going to link his asset store page in the description. Uh, so thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you like it. If you have any question, any feature request about this controller, let me know as always in the comment or on Discord. And reminder that it is currently 30% off. So I highly suggest you grab it now if you uh, wanted this kind of controls in RPG Builder. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.